little bit of rain today, which is not the end of the world, but I do hope it lifts because I have something exceptional to share with you guys today. But first things first, gotta get across the river. I took the bikes and the rack and the boat off today just to make sure I'd be short enough to fit on the ferry. Feels like I'm driving a sports car right now. Ever since I was a kid, all I wanted to be was an explorer. Sail the seven seas, find new worlds. But Uncle D, everything's already been found. What? Like everything? Well, yeah. Oh, man. Well, so much for that. But if I can't be an explorer, I can still be an adventurer. So I bought a motorhome and I'm hitting the open road. My name is Dustin Porter and this is Destination Adventure. What I'm looking for today, which is so exciting, and I can see part of one sticking out here, is the Paddle Wheeler Graveyard. This is the Yukon River here, and the boats that they used to run up and down when the, when the miners came were these great big old paddle wheelers, like steam-driven paddle wheelers. And when they retired them, I guess they just drug them up on shore here, and they're supposed to be, I don't know, three or four or something just sitting here. Oh my God. You can see him just sticking out up here. This is gonna be amazing. Paddlewheel Graveyard is a site on the Yukon River, just downriver from Dawson City, so a little ways north. And when you get there, you'll find the remains, the abandoned remains of half a dozen or so sternwheeler boats uh, that were used on the Yukon in the early part of the 20th century. The paddle wheelers are important to the Yukon because the river is important to the Yukon. The Yukon River practically defines the Yukon, defines the lives and livelihoods of the people who've lived here. Uh, and the river was important to the Yukon before uh, Settlers came from the south um, to so-called explore the territory and settle it. The advent of the paddle wheeler is, is important because it, uh, it really changed the, the nature of, uh, of, of settlement at the end of the 19th century. It was the technology of the paddle wheeler that allowed um, not so much people, but most importantly, supplies. During the earliest period, uh, there was a tremendous reliance on self-sufficiency, right? Uh, and so people would have to gather everything they needed from the land. And paddle wheelers helped change this. With paddle wheelers, huge volumes of supplies, provisions, and equipment could be brought in from outside in a way that uh, allowed uh, settler, settler, settler populations to no longer be reliant on, uh, on the land only. The earliest one is from 1903, uh, so it, it, it was there quite a long time. And then there are a few more like over the next 15 years or so, and then you really start to see the boats pile up there uh, in the 20s when the Yukon is, is shrinking, you know, the Yukon is long done growing, and companies find themselves seriously overstocked and, and over-equipped to deal with uh, the business that they have on river traffic, uh, and so they start putting more boats up uh, on the stays at, uh, at the yard down where the graveyard is. And this continued, you know, throughout the end of, to the end of the 19th century, uh, up to throughout the early parts of the 20th century until uh, about the Second World War, when, with, especially with the construction of the Alaska Highway, uh, you start to see the status quo transportation network of the Yukon that had been, literally forever, been based around uh, river communication and river transportation start to change. Uh, and so you start to see more roads being built. You start to see trucks replace sleds. And the paddle wheeler become a charming icon of a bygone era, including up to, up to the last one, right? And so it's this matter where, you know, the further in a boat is, the, the, old, the longer it's been there, the older it is. And ending finally with the Seattle number no. three and the Julia B. The Seattle number no. three, is a boat that I like in my role as director of the museum because the museum has a life ring, the only life ring we have. One of the few uh, items we have at all from a Yukon River boat is a life ring from the Seattle Number no. 3. A 
respected friend of mine has a wonderful phrase. He says, if our efforts to preserve our heritage are not sustainable, they will not be successful. The boats at the Paddle Roo Wheel Graveyard have been there, some of them for some of them for over a hundred years, and before long they will have all been there for a hundred years or more. And their decay is very seriously advanced. Even as late as the 1960s, the boats were in what might be sort of a, a worthwhile condition for preservation. The costs today for the benefits of the preservation is something that in my mind is very difficult to justify. Look at these boilers on here. Massive boilers. Wow. This is amazing. Look at the size of this thing. So big. Wow. There we go. Wow, this wood's still in good shape here. <sighs> I'm going to try and kind of walk cautiously here. Whoa. Oh, this big thing. This is the top of a steam engine. The piston would go right in here. There it is. That's the piston for the steam engine. That's a, the whole thing's right here. Freaking cool. Original paint on the inside still. <sighs> I can see, oh, it looks like they're all lined up right here. Look at, there's a whole bunch. Cause I can see this is the separation between two boats right here. <clears throat> see if I can cross over. This wood that I'm walking on here, I'm not sure if it's wall or roof. It's cool though, it's all tongue and groove. Oh, geez. Okay. Don't fall in there, Dustin. Here we go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bone dry in here still. Well, not quite, but just about. Oh man, hung up. Okie dokie, here we go. I wonder. I'm not done exploring that one yet. Let's finish this one first. <clears throat> okay, this is officially the largest boiler I've ever found. Look at this thing, starts here and it ends all the way over there. That is wild. See if we can find a way into this one. Whoa, there's another one. <laughs> Uh, 
There's the end of that massive boiler. How the heck am I gonna get in there? Or maybe I can't, maybe this is just falling down. Yeah, this is a roof here that's fallen down. So there's nothing really to get into, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So far, so good. <laughs> there we go. Oh man. <laughs> okay. I don't think I want to go very far up on that thing. Oh my God, you guys. Look at this. <sighs> the boiler you see on this one, that's the size I'm used to seeing. The one in that center boat it's about double this one here. This old deck I'm walking on here, just think about it. A hundred years ago, somebody probably walked these exact same steps. There's another steam engine there. First thing I'm noticing that's really neat is this right here. This is a lever that would have been maybe a pressure relief or something coming from this pipe. Like that. That's really awesome actually. Not a whole lot down here. This is my first time seeing one of these old paddle wheelers like this. So I want to open up the comment section for anyone that recognizes things like what this lever does and stuff. I can recognize a couple things on here, but not much. So if you guys know it, please feel free. Let me know. Here we are. Look at that. This seems to be the only one that still has the wheels left. All the uh, paddles are gone. The wheels are still there in good shape too. Look at the big arm here. Going straight to the steam engine. Yeah, look at that. This would have mounted here, straight in to the engine and then back. Sorry, slow going here, trying to get around everything. Then the arm straight back to that. Just wild. While I was about walking back there, look at this. This is maybe an old uh, survival boat. Not totally sure on that, but that would be my guess. Just the shape of it. You'll have to excuse my total lack of correct terminology here, but I'm gonna try and explain this to you. I'm on the boat furthest this side, and uh, it actually has two steam engines, this one here and this one here. I'm guessing all these boats would have, but uh, this one's so cool because you can still map it out. The piston goes back, then to the arm, and uh, this side, and then it has what I would call a fulcrum, maybe, or a crankshaft, I don't know. But this one, the arm is going down. That one, the arm's going up. So they would run at opposite times to keep the wheel rolling. Just cool, like learning this stuff and kind of seeing how it works firsthand. Here it is. Oh. So this one looks to maybe be in the worst shape. It almost seems buried. This could be just a wall that's fallen. 
because the rest of it is obviously stretching in to the forest over there. Coming up to the bow here. Wow. Look at the shape of that one there. Just blows me away the craft, craftsmanship from back in the day. Like this is all cut so that this side of the boat would fit perfectly up here. And I don't know where the other side would go up to. It'd probably be that identical piece, maybe a little bit further over here. There's not much left of this one though. That's really interesting. There's a series of square nails there. Uh, round nails came into North America in like the 1850s. So that doesn't really tell us much here because a lot of this boat is round nails. But I'm surprised to see <laughs> the square nails in the mix. I don't know. Still on this old boat here, and I just noticed something really, really interesting. All these, and I thought these were dowels at first, but they're, uh, they're plugs. Didn't expect that there. It's a good view from the front so you can see just the size of these things. This is the tip of the bow right here. <clears throat> wow, so this is that really long, big boiler. It's got some info for us here. Trying to do a little bit of Googling on the writing on the front of this valve here. And there's not a whole lot to find, but it's a high pressure globe valve. The patent was filed in the US 1905, approved in 1906, and then uh, expired in 1923. That's pretty much all I can find about it. And then there's just a little schematic of the inside of the valve. Pretty cool though. Yeah, that's the one, that lever right there. It's how you crank it up to 11. Second day now, heading over to the ships because I was doing some digging online and I found four yesterday. Apparently there's seven over there. So just taking the bike today. Let's see if we can find the other ones. <laughs> I did a little scrolling around on Google Earth and there's only one other spot that the other three could be. There should be a trail right in here going further back, unless they're in a totally different location, but I think they're here. Just found a couple people, I mean, for lack of a better term, living in the woods here. <laughs> and I asked them uh, if there was some more shipwrecks up here. And they said, yes, there's three more up here, but there's nothing left and don't go. There's nothing to see. So I kind of hope I'm not going to stumble onto something I'm not supposed to stumble onto here. This is about where it should be. And there's a little trail going up here. So, oh yeah, right here. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> There's nothing to see. Come on. Once again, the nothing to see claim. Deceiving. I want to see what this thing is. Some sort of winch. That's, uh, I've never seen one like this before. It's got three in a row. Wow, this one's in 
both of these other two are still in quite good shape actually. Wow, look at how wide they are. <laughs> All three of these are pointing that direction. Wow. This third one here is completely iron hull. That's crazy. I did not expect that. Yep. This one is in such good condition still, of course, because it's iron. The decking is almost all gone. Holy. And the back of that one's still in pretty good shape there. The woodwork on these ones is amazing. Okay, I was wondering what uh, what these things are with the big arms sticking off of them. They're rudders. See that right there? Three of them in a row. Wow, look at this. That one's notched out at the front. Two pulleys are still in there. There's a couple spots on here. This is a perfect example right here where you can see there was at one time something else on the deck here. This is probably where the boiler was. Maybe up there. I don't know. But uh, I wonder if maybe this one was more for transportation of equipment as opposed to people because this deck is just like flat pretty much all the way. Now that's cool right there. I am impressed. <clears throat> what I love about this site is if you go and view each of these ships, there's enough left where uh, it actually paints a pretty good mental picture of what these things look like and how they were run. I mean, each is a little bit different, but they're similar enough to give you a good image anyways. But uh, that's all seven shipwrecks. Stoked to find them. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.